everybody, Nerdy Ness here with Just So Nerdy. Today I'm starting on my Halloween series and I will be creating a look that is inspired by the iconic Universal Monster movie, The Bride of Frankenstein. I grew up watching a ton of old monster movies. And James Whale's The Bride of Frankenstein is definitely considered one of the best. Now, I'm no stranger to this character. Actually, she's the very first costume I ever created with a sewing machine. And now that said, I'm not going to be recreating this as a costume. Um, instead, I'm going to create an outfit consisting of two elements. First, I'm going to have a base dress that resembles uh, like the mummy wrap that she has when she's first revealed. And then maybe sort of a coat that is going to represent her big dramatic outer layer. Um, honestly, I am not sure yet, but I've got a general idea, so I'm just going to start there. Okay, so here's my two patterns, my two basic patterns that I think I'm going to work with for this Bride of Frankenstein look. For the uh, dress underneath, I am going to use this pattern. I'm doing it because it's got like a square uh, neckline here. I am going to make it a little bit longer down to my ankles, and I'm going to taper this a lot. And then this, I think I'm going to make this jacket. Who knows? Let's play with it. So here is the fabric that I got. This is actually bridal fabric, which is absolutely perfect. So I'm going to make this dress so that these are horizontal in the dress to look like it's wrapped all the way around my torso and my arms and stuff. I don't know if it's going to work, but that's the way things normally are when I make stuff. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. This is the front and I'm already getting a little excited about it because this fabric is super cool and this kind of square shape here with the neckline is exactly what I wanted. And the good news about this is that I am just straight up following the pattern. I don't have to make any alterations beyond the fact that I just lengthened it. Now we get to start stitching it together. This will officially be the first time I'm doing lining properly um, per the directions. Every time I do a project, I try to pick something that does something that I'm not used to or something that I haven't done a whole bunch of times before so that I learned something and uh, that's, that's what I'm doing here. So that's good. Right sides together. And that looks exactly like I was hoping it would. I'm gonna press this, get started on the sleeve. Now this has to be gathered, which means I'm gonna have to sew along here and then it's gonna get pulled together so that it creates kind of like this bunched, ruffled look over the shoulder. So I've got these threads at the end, okay, which I of course cut because I'm an idiot, but you pull on these and it bunches up the fabric as you can see, it has this cool effect, and I was really afraid that the pleats were going to make it hard to do this bunching, but it looks fine. Okay, so far so good. It's just slow going. Let's cross fingers and take a look. Okay. <laughs> look at it, it's so cute! Okay. Well, that could have been worse. I'm going to get the other one on. Okay, I have sewed on the sleeves. Both sleeves went on with remarkable ease. <laughs> I think it looks exactly like I wanted. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start the skirt. I'm excited. All right, so with the bodice done, for the most part, I'm moving on to the skirt. That's the next step. Since I don't have to put the zipper in, um, it's really just gonna be a matter of, I have to put in some pleats, I guess, and then just sew up this two sides of the front and back panel, and then just sew it onto the bodice, and that's kind of it. That's what it's supposed to look like. That looks more or less even. It's even enough. This is even enough, okay? I'm gonna do the next one, and then I'm gonna sew them up and attach them to the sides.
I have the skirt panels sewn together. I am going to kind of pin them on here to see what they look like. It looks like this is a little bit too wide for my dress form, but it's not gonna be too wide for this guy. All right, <laughs> I've got this skirt pinned on to the dress form uh, very lazily. It's not even lined up or anything. So my next step is I am going to take this skirt and connect it to the top here. And uh, then I will be able to put it on and we'll be able to figure out how high up I have to um, bring this hem and also how tight I want to bring it in. That fits. Now I'm able to mark exactly how long I want to make it and I'll be able to taper it in a little bit. Okay. So the question is, how far in? How far in do I bring it? Shoot, I'm gonna have to do some math. Once I'm done sewing this up, I am gonna put it on and that should be almost the final shape. Okay, I've tried it on and uh, it more or less fits. I am going to finish up the hem and then I will work on the buttonholes. So I decided to finish the back with some ribbon in a crisscross pattern like this to match her dress instead of putting in a zipper. And I will make some buttonholes to run the ribbon through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it, that's it. There's the hole. There we go. That wasn't the end at all. Would you like to hear what happened after that? Now I am going to work on what was supposed to be like an outer kind of sleeveless jacket. I don't know if I want to do that. This dress turned out in many ways exactly how I anticipated, but in some ways not. I am going to play around with some fabric. I'm gonna lay stuff out, I'm gonna drape stuff, I'm going to pin stuff up. I need a shape that just makes me go, oh yeah, that's it. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am getting an idea. After a lot of brainstorming, I chose to create what is essentially a very long throw made of two big panels that hang in the front, which I wanted to fall like this, and one draped section in the back like this. I connected the two sections into one long continuous piece, which of course immediately fell off of the shoulder and onto the floor, so I added some hooks to hold it up. All I needed now was a final finishing touch for these shoulder seams. I did not like the way that they looked. I'm not joking, I, I, I'm really just going totally insane. Now I spent hours trying so many different ideas for this final touch for the outer layer. This is a hot mess, looks like garbage. I can't believe how frustrating this project is. It started off so smooth. I will finish this, I just need to step away. Thanks to the support of two creative geniuses, my mom and my husband, I finally settled on making some pleats from the outer layer fabric, matching the dress pleats, and uh, therefore tying everything together.
along, come along. It's all over. Get back to your homes. Go to sleep. <laughs>